instead of finding the data by hand, can you find the data with technology? And you can do this with Desmos, and I will be happy to show you how to do that if you want to use Desmos, but I would prefer you guys know how to use this on the graphing calculator because you'll use it in classes after this to do this kind of information. So what I have here, this is legitimate data from an outbreak of tornadoes that they had in May of 1999, long before any of you were born. And the length of the path of the tornado is what's listed here. And you can see there's a big range in terms of looking at the different data values. And we're not going to do this by hand, so we're going to have the calculator calculate all this stuff for us. On this list that I have here to the side, the only thing the calculator would not tell you, there's three things. It doesn't tell you the mode, but hopefully you could look at the data and figure that out. It doesn't tell you the range, but it will tell you the minimum and maximum, which also you could probably tell from the data. And it will not tell you the inner quartile range, but it will tell you the first quartile and the third quartile so you can find it. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to grab my calculator. Now, everybody's might, if you don't have an 84 like I do up here, yours might look just slightly different in terms of the screen, but the 83s do this exact same thing and it's the same buttons. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit the button that says stat and it's kind of, it's like right in the middle, the third row down is where it should be at. So you're just going to hit stat and I'm going to write this for you, but really what you're going to see is this very first screen that I have here and we actually want that first option. So after you hit stat, you're just going to hit enter because what we're going to do is edit the, the list in here and put in our data. Okay, now I've got some stuff in mind. So you guys might have some stuff in yours. If you have anything in the columns there, what you want to do is use the little arrow key, go up to the top and it'll say little subscripts like L1, L2. The L stands for list. So if you have anything in there, just arrow up to the top and so that's got like a black background and then you hit clear which is right under the down arrow key and enter and that'll get rid of anything that you might have in the column so i'm going to do the same thing just arrow up to the top of that so the list one is highlighted hit clear hit enter don't want to use the delete key here um, does anybody's not start with list one Okay, let me just show you this just real quick so you'll have it in your back pocket if you need it. Okay, so I've done this many of times. I'm accidentally like deleted a list. There's a delete key that's right above the stat. So let's say you accidentally deleted a column um, or maybe a couple columns or you deleted something you didn't want to delete. All you have to do, that stat button, the fifth option there that says set up editor, that is a reset button. So if you accidentally delete something you don't want to do, you can go into this menu. It's just that fifth option. Just hit enter twice. And then if you go back into the stat and edit, it should restore anything that you maybe accidentally deleted. So just keep that in mind. It's on that stat menu number five to do a reset if you accidentally delete something. Okay, now once you're in the screen, um, what you're going to do is actually enter the data and I'm just going to put it in list one. You can put it in different lists um, but probably the easiest is just to go ahead and use the first column. You have to hit enter after each data value. <clears throat> so I'm going to enter the lengths of these tornadoes and just after each one just hit enter. And then I just kind of go back and you can use the arrow keys to scroll up and down if you want to, but I just kind of go back and check and make sure I didn't mistype something or I didn't forget to hit enter between the data values just to make sure I typed it right. But you do not have to type these in a particular order. You can just, you see they're not listed from least to greatest or anything like that. <clears throat> so you can type them in any order. Once you've got your data in, you're going to hit that stat button again just right in the middle of that third row down and we want the calculator to do some calculations for us so you're just going to arrow with the arrow keys across the top to the menu that says calc 
And that's the calculate menu. And I'm going to write this, but really you're not going to do anything here either. That very first option says one VAR stats, which stands for one variable statistics. And that's actually what we want. So just once you hit that stat, just go ahead and hit enter. And this is going to depend on your calculator. Now, I put my data in list one. So I'm going to zoom this out so you guys can see my fingers here real quick. If that does not say, if you don't have this, don't worry, you're, you're fine. If you have this screen, though, you can change what list it will do the data for. Mine, I changed it to list two. If you had your data in list one, I'm just going to hit second and then the number one. So it's probably, it should default to be list one, but just in case somebody changed it, you can change that. If you don't have the screen, don't worry about it. It'll default to list one. And then all you do is you just keep hitting enter until it reveals the data to you. I think you have to hit it about three times. All right. Now, there's some like weirdo looking symbols on this screen. So I've been telling you guys that the X bar at the top, that is just the mean. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that out. So it's about 12.8125 is our mean for that data set. And then the next several things you don't need, what I want you to do, just use the down arrow key and just go down as far as it'll let you. Now, we'll talk about some of the stuff above there later in the week, but the N right there is just the number of data values you have. So we have 16 tornadoes there. Then it gives you the five number summary at the bottom of that list. So the minimum, which we probably could have grabbed from the table, I'm just going to grab it from the calculator screen, is one. First quartile, six and a half. The median, which is also the same as the second quartile, I probably should have put that on there, that is 8.5. The third quartile is 15. And then the maximum is 39. Now, the other things we highlighted right at the beginning, that's not, you can see, in that menu, and it's not going to be, like, in a different menu you can find. So do we have a mode for this data set at all? Do you see any repeated numbers? Eight? Do I have any other? There's two eights and there's two sevens, so this is a tie. You actually have two modes in this data set. There's two eights and there's two sevens. <coughs> None of the other values are repeated, so it's okay to have more than one. Yeah. Oh, do I have two fifteen? Oh. Oh, you're totally right. I have two fifteen. That's really sad. I did not notice that. All right. Do I have any other repeated ones? I don't think so. So this has three modes. Oh, good. Now, do you guys remember how to find the range? It's just the map. The if you forget. The range is just your maximum data value minus your minimum data value. So just 39 minus 1, so that would be 38. And then the inner quartile range, which is going to become very important for what we're going to do with outliers today. This is the third quartile minus the first quartile, so Q3 minus Q1. All right, now, I did not do this on purpose, but if you take... 15 minus six and a half, it actually is the same as the median. That is not a normal thing that happens, so I just want to point that out. But if you take Q3, which is 15, minus Q1, which is six and a half, it does give you eight and a half. <coughs> so not to be confusing, but it does end up being the same as the median. All right, now what we're going to talk about is an outlier just really quick. So outlier data value or values that are going to be substantially different from the rest. And there is an actual calculation. So don't always assume something is an outlier because it might not fit what I'm going to give you. Even though it maybe looks like it's really far away from, from the data, there is a specific formula to determine what values constitute an outlier. So if I'm looking at that data set that I have there, uh, there's a couple numbers that I think are pretty separated from the others. So um, I think there might be a, a data value or maybe two that are outliers. So I'm going to show you how to calculate those really quick. All right, now you have to find the interquartile range to be able to find outliers, which we just did. That was eight and a half. All right, so they have two numbers you're going to look at. So the lower bound, sometimes it's called the lower fence. I'll probably call it the lower bound, but if you see fence, that's the same thing. 
It's any number below, I'm going to give you a little formula here. It is the first quartile minus, and this is just part of the formula, 1.5 times whatever your inner quartile range is. Any number that's below that would be considered an outlier in the lower half of the left side of the data. And then for the upper bound, any number above, this is just slightly different, it's your third quartile, but on this end you add 1.5 times the inner quartile range. Any number above that would be considered an outlier on the right side or the upper half of the data if we had it organized from least to greatest, which we don't need to do. We can just figure these out. So we're going to calculate the lower bound and the upper bound for our data set real quick here. So for the lower bound, our Q1 is six and a half. And so I just do minus one and a half multiplied by our inner quartile range, which for this guy is eight and a half. So just, oh, if you guys are in this screen, I think you could just start typing, but if you want to get out, I use this all the time. Just hit, gosh, there's a glare, sorry. Um, just hit second and the button right next to it so the second function is quit. That'll take you back to the main screen if you're ever in a screen you don't want to be in. So six and a half minus one and a half times my inner quartile range, which is eight and a half. And this sometimes happens. It just depends on the question. This ends up being a negative value, which is fine, but we obviously don't have any negative data values in that set that you guys are looking at there. So there's no outlier on the lower end. On the upper end, you do your third quartile for our data set here, that's 15. On this end, you add 1.5 times your inner quartile range, which is that eight and a half. So, so on the upper end, you're gonna add, on the lower end, you're gonna multiply, or you're gonna subtract, sorry. 1.5 times, and I just said that and then did it wrong, eight and a half. So any number above 27.75. All right, so if I, let me go back out on this so you guys can see it. If I look back up at my data set, we obviously don't have any outliers on the lower end because they don't have any negative tornado lengths here. <coughs> Do I have any outliers above 27.75 in that list that you're looking at? Yeah. Yes, there's actually two. 39 and 37 are both outliers. And you maybe could have guessed that, but I just want to check and make sure using our rule for finding outliers there. Okay, now here's what I'm going to have you guys do. When you remove an outlier from the data set, it does give you better information about the data as a whole. And so outliers can really kind of skew the data. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to have you remove it, and then we're going to graph both, and you guys can see the comparison from the box plot at the bottom, how the outlier affects the data and how it's spread out. So to do this, it's super quick. I'm going to go back. We already have all this data in the screen, so I'm going to just show you how to remove it or remove an outlier. Easy, easy. Hit your stat, and then I'm going to remove the outlier, so I'm going to edit this real quick. So just hit Enter. And <clears throat> here is where I'm going to have you guys use the delete key. It's right above the stat button. So just arrow down like 37 was an outlier. I'm just going to delete it. It will take it out of the list. Then I'm just going to arrow down to the 39, delete it, and it'll take it out of the list. And then we still have all our other data so we don't have to retype it or anything like that. Now I'm going to have us recalculate the five number summary and the mean so we can compare it with the data set where the outliers are involved. So all you have to do, once you remove those two outliers there, I'm going to just hit stat, and then we're going to calculate again. So just arrow over to the calculate menu. You want the one variable stats right there at the top, just keep hitting enter until it shows up. And then you're going to see a lot of this is altered. So now my mean, instead of being 12.8 something, this, I'm just going to go a couple decimal places here. This is about 9.21. So it's a significant change in the mean. It's three, three full miles shorter. 
All right, and then you don't need the next kind of four things. So just go ahead, just take your arrow key, go all the way down as far to the bottom as you can, and the five number summary should be down there at the bottom. So the minimum didn't change because we didn't have any outliers on the lower end, so that's still one. The Q1 changes just a little bit from six and a half to six. The median also changes just a little bit from eight and a half to eight. The Q3 changes from 15 to 13. And then the maximum is going to be different because we removed those two outliers. So the maximum here is going to be 22. Now, what I'm going to have you guys do, I just put two box plots down here so we can compare them. You could technically just use one number line to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and just separate them. So let me put, I'm going to put the original on the first little number line, and then I'm going to put with the outliers removed on the second line so we can kind of compare them. So we're just going to grab the data from the top. So on the top, the minimum was 1. And just estimate these are like 6.5 and stuff like that. So each, each little hash mark on the number line goes by once. So it's just labeled every third number. So I'm going to go to 6.5 best I can. And <clears throat> my median is at 8.5. Bless you. My Q3 is at 15, and then the maximum was 39 in the original data set. So this is really spread out all the way across this number line here. Now, once we remove the outliers, I'm not going to use nearly as much of that number line, and it's going to condense the data way more towards the left side of this number line. I, my minimum is still the same. It's still at 1. Now my Q1 is at 6, my median is at 8, and my Q3 is at 13. So it's just shifted slightly. And what's going to be majorly different, we removed those two outliers, so now my maximum is here at 22. And you can see the data is much more concentrated to the left side when we remove the outliers. So this would probably be a better representation of what actually happened. Is anybody having a question? Excuse me. Okay, on the back we're going to do something that's a little bit different. We're going to do some percentiles. All right, now there's a couple formulas for this depending on how the question is asked of you. But just in general, what is a percentile? So we did quartiles, this is a little different. Percentiles divide instead of into even groups of four, this actually divides in groups from one to 100. This is not gonna be something you're gonna graph. But a percentile is any number and it can be from, it's actually from zero to 100. I think I just said one, zero to 100. All right, and then you can associate that value with a value from the data set. The percentile is going to show the percent of the data that are less than or equal to wherever that data value is at. Okay, so a lot of time, you guys may have heard this, or you may have even seen this like with SAT scores or something like that. So let's say you got your SAT results back and they told you you were in the 90th percentile. What that means is that you scored better than 90% of the people that took the test. So that's what the percentile means. If you're in like the 50th percentile, you scored better than 50% of the other people that took the test. So that's kind of how this works. Now, how to calculate what data value is a given percentile. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to take basically the percentile. They'll tell you the 20th percentile. You're going to write the percent that would be associated with that percentile. And then you multiply it by the data value. Now, whenever you guys do this, and this is going to give you the place or the position that this is in. And what we have to do here 
is you always have to round down on these no matter what. So if you get like, let's say I got 22.9, you have to round that down to position 22. All right, so no matter what, you're gonna round down, which is kind of weird, but anything that you get, basically you just chop the decimal off and like go with the number that you have that's the before the decimal place. Now, the one thing that is slightly annoying about these you do have to know like where is that data value in the list and i'm not going to have you guys order these these are already from least to greatest but i have to figure out what the position of each one of these data value is so i'm going to just write down literally like one two three just to label this if you do this up front it makes the question so much easier to answer so i'm just going to label each one so 43 is in the first position, that's the smallest number, and then 54 is the second. So just go all the way down here and just label these. This is going to make the rest of what we're going to do today so much easier. Oh, and I just realized, I'm going to, forgive me, you guys, I can go back up to that little thing I wrote down, is the percent times the number of data values, okay, <clears throat> my fault, number of data values. For this particular one, number of data values is going to be 25. It tells you there's 25 test scores. You wrote numbers up 1 through 25. Okay, here's how this works. So the 90th percentile, so think about like 90% as a decimal. You just do 0 0.9 times your number of data values. So I've got 25. So every time here I'm going to multiply by 25. So 0 0.9 times 25. And then you guys can see on my screen there, I actually got 22 and a half. No matter what, you want to round down so I want the 22nd position, and I'm just going to grab a highlighter here real quick. The 22nd position is a score of 96. So my answer to the question would be the 96. So that person, whoever got the 96, got better than 90% of the rest of the kids in the class. That's how that works. If you want the 20th percentile, we're just going to do 0.2 times the number of data values, which is 25 here. And when I do this, this is actually a nice number. So this is just, this is going to give me the fifth position. So you just go right up here. Whatever score is in the fifth position, that's going to be better than 20% of the other people. So my answer to this question would be the person that got the 62. And your 50th percentile, I'm just going to do this one more time, do 0.5 times your number of data values. Now, this gives you 12 and a half. Sorry, let me put that so you can see on the screen. you got to round this down. No matter what, round it down. Just chop the decimal place off. This is the 12th position that I want here. So you're just going to go up to your data set. Find whatever number is in the 12th position, and that's going to be your lovely answer. So 72 for this step. All right, now the second type of question you'd be asking, I'm going to use the same data to do this. How do you determine the actual percentile? <clears throat> okay, so you are going to take your data value. divided by the number of data values. This is going to be a division. And then what we're going to do is multiply that by 100. And I'm going to check something real quick because I feel like that's not right. What is that? OK, forgive. Data value position. 
and then you divide that by the number of data values multiplied by 100. Now, this one has a little weird thing to it too, like we always round down. On this one, it says if a data value appears more than once in the set, so like up here, I have a couple different scores were 88, or I had a couple different scores that were 99. You go with the data value farthest to the right. What was? Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. How did, Oh, it's going to go up. <laughs> oh, it has to get back. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this, they're filming him. Okay. Cool excitement for <laughs> the farthest to the right. Okay. Sorry, I should have spaced this better, but I'm going to pull this up so you guys can actually see the data values. Okay, so I'm going to give you a score, right, that's in this list somewhere. I'm going to use a different color. So, um, what percentile is the score of a 70? So, you find the 70 up here, and what you're going to do is you're going to take the data value position. So, the 70 was in position 10, and we're going to divide that by 25. Multiply by 100. This will give us our, oh, he still can't get that bird out. <laughs> All right, I'll let you guys can look in a second here. I'll finish this up real quick. All right, so that gives me 0. 0.4. You multiply it by 100. This is the 40th percentile is what you would get here. So it's just wherever that is in the data set. So if I have 93, come up here. 93 is in the 20th position. So you just do 20 over 25, that total number, multiply that by 100. And it should be 80th position here. I just wrote 8, 80th. All right, now, if you go up to the, the list and you look at the 88, <coughs> there are two 88s. So you have to go with the position that's farthest to the right. So when you do 88, you want to pick that position 18. So we're going to do 18 divided by 25. We are still working on getting that bird out. Okay, he just got it finally. All right, sorry. Um, so you get 0.72, multiply that by 100. So this is 72. <laughs> so this is the 72nd percentile. <laughs> right. I'm curious how that pigeon got in the building. Okay, anyway. Um, now, 62, if you go back up to the list here, um, there are, again, there are two 62s. You have to go with the one farthest to the right. Now, this should be a good check for what we did above because it should be, we got that one for the 20th percentile. So when I do this calculation, we should get the 20th percentile for our data values. So you go with the one, like I said, farthest to the right. So that's in fifth position. So you take 5 out of 25, multiply that by 100, <coughs> excuse me, we do get 20, just as a little check for the one we already did there, and that is how you're going to calculate your lovely percentile. So I will give you guys all these formulas, like test quiz.